Dear students, welcome back. Now we are going to see the fibrous pericardium. The fibrous pericardium is the outermost layer. So, and it is a conical sac and it has an apex it is having an apex and it is having a base and this one is the anterior surface and the same way on the posterior side surfaces and two lateral surfaces so the fibrous pericardium is a conical fibrous sac and it is having an apex and base apex uh, superiorly and the base um, inferiorly and it is having an anterior surface and posterior surface and two lateral surfaces now coming to the apex apex it is pierced by the roots of so this apex is pierced by the roots of the pulmonary trunk this is the pulmonary trunk and the ascending aorta and the superior vena cava so these are the three roots which are peers three roots of great vessels peers the apex of the fibrous pericardium so apex is pierced by the roots of the pulmonary trunk ascending iota and the superior vena cava okay and this fibrous pericardium fuses with the adventitial cords of these vessels that means the outer layers of these vessels are fused with the uh, apex uh, of the peri fibrous pericardium okay and and also this fibrous pericardium fuses or blends we can call it as fuser or blends with the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia so we have seen that pretracheal tracheal uh, layer of the deep cervical fascia when we have studied in the superior media stain so that pretracheal uh, a layer of deep cervical fascia is uh, blends with the apex of the uh, fibrous pericardium okay and then the base here the base rests on the central tendon so this is the diaphragm the diaphragm is having two domes and at the central part is called as the central tendon so the base of the heart or the base of the fib fibrous pericardium rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm to which it is attached by a, a facial band so this these two are attached with a facial band so called as pericardiophrenic or phrenopericardial ligament what is that pericardiophrenic or phrenopericardial ligament and the inferior vena cava pierces the base of the pericardium posteriorly so posteriorly the base of the pericardium is pierced by the inferior vena cava so this is about the apex and base of the um, fibrous pericardium so fibrous pericardium is a conical fibrous sac and it is having an apex and base anterior surface posterior surface and two lateral surface and the apex is pierced by the ro roots of the pulmonary trunk iota and the superior vena cava and this apex is fused with the adventitial roots of these vessels that means the outer layer of the vessels that is called as uh, tunica adventitia of the great vessels tunica adventitia of the great vessel that is called as adventitial cords of these vessels 
and the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia will also blends with the apex and coming to the base the base rests on the central tendon of the diaphragm to which it is attached by a facial band called the pericardiophrenic or pherino pericardial ligament okay and the inferior vena cava pierces the base of the pericardium posteriorly okay this is about the apex and base of the fibrous pericardium now you can see this anterior surface so this is the anterior surface so this anterior surface anteriorly it is connected to here we can see the sternum also here an outline of sternum anteriorly it is connected to upper and lower ends of the body of the sternum here you can see this is the connecting point of um, fibrous pericardium with the sternum so body of the sternum it is connected to the upper and lower ends of the body of the sternum by the superior and inferior by the superior and inferior sternopericardial ligaments sternopericardial ligaments so these are the ligaments we have seen the in the contents of anterior mediastinum isn't it so these are the ligaments which connects the fibrous pericardium anteriorly with that of the body of the sternum so uh, this is uh, the connection of fibrous pericardium and the sternum and this one is the superior sternopericardial ligament and this one is the inferior pericardio pericardial ligaments these two ligaments attaches the anterior surface of the fibrous pericardium to the sternum and the anterior margins of the lung and the pleura anterior margins of the lung and the pleura overlap this surface overlap this surface and intervene between it and intervene between it and the sternum that means some margins of the lung that is the anterior margins of the lung and the pleura will come in between the sternum and the pericardium some okay so um this is the thing happened with the lung anterior margins of the lung and except so only some area will not come into contact with it except over the bare area of the pericardium which directly comes into contact with the lateral half of the lower part of the sternum at that place there is no uh, a covering or attachments uh, to the pericardium okay so the bare area of the pericardium which directly comes into contact with the lateral left lateral half so here the left lateral half of the lower part of the sternum here it is a bare area there is no um uh, attachments or uh, any structures in between them so this is the lower left lateral part of the um, sternum okay the bare area of the pericardium the bare area of the pericardium is opposite to the cardiac notch of the left lung and this area will be the uh, will be present opposite to the uh, cardiac notch of the left lung and the thymus is related to the upper part of the anterior surface of the pericardium so the thymus gland will be related so only a small part of the thymus 
is um, related to the upper part of the anterior surface of the pericardium until the age of puberty so this uh, relation we have seen in the contents of the middle mediastinum some thymus gland is also related in the middle mediastinum so because uh, this pericardium is situated in the middle mediastinum so the thymus is related to the upper part of the anterior surface of the pericardium until the age of puberty okay and posterior surface coming to the posterior surface posteriorly it is related to the posterior parts of the mediastinal surfaces of the lungs and the structures which are present in the posterior mediastinum that is trachea uh, esophagus and the thoracic duct so all these structures are uh, related posteriorly and also the uh, it is related to the posterior parts of the mediastinal surfaces of the lungs okay the structures like um, esophagus okay and also descending thoracic aorta and esophageal flexes of nerves and veins will pierce the surface two on each side to enter the pericardium okay okay all these structures are related posteriorly we will see again posteriorly it is related to the posterior part of the mediastinal surfaces of the lungs and the structures in the posterior mediastinum um, that is the esophagus uh, you people know the descending thoracic aorta uh, and also the uh, here trachea we can't see but it is divided uh, at the level of fourth um, vertebral body that is it is divided into principal bronchi so the main structures are esophagus and the descending thoracic aorta and also the esophageal flexes of nerves the nerves which supply to the esophagus and the four pulmonary veins the four pulmonary veins pierces this surface so these pulmonary veins will pierces this parietal uh, fibrous pericardium two on each side uh, to enter the pericardium so that means these veins are coming from the lungs so this will pierce on the posterior aspect and enter into the uh, pericardium so now coming to the laterally so laterally this fibrous pericardium is related to mediastinal surfaces of the lungs and pleura with the phrenic nerve and the pericardiophrenic vessels descending between the pleura and the pericardium descending between the pleura and the pericardium so this uh, phrenic nerves are coming from the cervical region this will uh, descend down and this will uh, uh, move this will pass in between the pleural layer and the pericardium layer okay so this is about the fibrous pericardium and its relations and the next other layer is the serous pericardium uh, and this serous pericardium is a closed serous sac which has been invaginated by the developing heart from above and behind and a result of invagination it presents two portions one is the visceral layer and the parietal layer the visceral layer is adherent to the surface of the heart and the roots of the great vessels and is reflected from the later along the two sheets to become continuous with the parietal layer so this parietal layer which lines the inner surface of the fibrous pericardium that means so here have we know that this is the uh, fibrous pericardium it is having apex and base and for example this one is the heart so the layer which surrounds the which is very much clear uh, attached to this one um, is the visceral layer 
of serous pericardium and this one is continuous at the level of uh, this uh, roots of glade vessels and this one is continuous with the parietal layer of the serous pericardium and this will this uh, parietal layer will covers the inner surface of the fibrous pericardium inner surface of the fibrous pericardium therefore a cavity is formed in between these two layers and this cavity is called as pericardial cavity okay and this pericardial cavity is filled with pericardial fluid okay and the roots of the aorta and the pulmonary trunk are enclosed in one sheath the superior and inferior vena cava and the pulmonary veins lie in another sheath which is attached along an inverted l shape so because of this uh, um, presence or location of this um, arteries and the veins so this arteries are covered by a one sheath and whereas the veins all veins are uh, covered by an another sheath called as venous sheath arterial sheath and venous sheath this um, venous sheath uh, uh, is uh, present in an inverted l shape arrangement we can see that sheath so that can be seen when we remove the heart when we separate the heart from the pericardium then we can find uh, such kind of uh, uh, sheets and also we can see this some sinuses some sinuses which are situated in the um, pericardial cavity so those sinuses are called as oblique sinus and the transverse sinus actually this sinuses are formed uh, during in, uh, during uh, in the developmental stage that is the embryonic stage so uh, during that stage this pulmonary uh, veins and the venous uh, tube and the arterial tubes are becoming uh, separately and during this formation of all these um, uh, tubes some sinuses are uh, formed which separates that which separates the arterial tube with that of the venous tube that is the transverse sinus which separates the arterial tube with the venous tube so now we are going to see those sinuses which are present in serous pericardium that can we that will be seen very clearly when we remove the heart from the pericardium we can see those openings and also the sinuses so that thing we are going to see in the next video thank you